actually an entrepreneur who has three of his own businesses. Besides his role at Tendrami, um, he has also helped to establish many startups and to establish many brands. And he's the perfect person to pose the question about how to get into the new business market. So if you were somebody who is about to launch their business, do you feel that they should actually have some work experience under their belt before they do so, or should they dive right in? I mean, you're a consultant and a mentor, and I know that you've advised many people about this subject. Well, thank you uh, to bring up this question, as there are lots of mix-up between the definition of entrepreneurship and the entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship is the process of establishing a business. However, the entrepreneur, the person, is should have a personal traits. It's by nature. There are a set of skills that they can learn, of course, but it is something by nature. They have the ability to scan the opportunities and to harness these opportunities and develop it, innovate it, until it's a product or service. So the entrepreneur as a person is highly important to be in corporates and alone with a business. However, from what I saw in the market, it's always good for them to start working at least four years in different sectors or companies or one company or whatever because he, will, he or she will, will confront lots of hidden gems of learnings that you won't have from books or anything. Like, for example, what, and that's what we are seeing now, the stress of the tech companies that are laying off this amount of uh, employees. Are you capable to do such a thing? Is it that easy for you psychologically and mentally and you can have such a decisions? This is something you gain by time and by experience and it cannot be there like this, you know? So yes, I recommend that they have to work at least for four years in the market and then to gain this experience and then they can go for their own business. And by the way, it's not, it's not a must. They can be entrepreneurs in their company, in their corporates. I'm always saying this. It's not a must to have your own business. You can be an entrepreneur in your department, in your company, in your whatever. And that's what I'm echoing that what was said in the previous panels that the private sector and they have to support the new directions to evolve this kind of employees inside the companies because they are really needed. They can develop new ideas and directions. So, yeah. So be an entrepreneur within your own company, get four years of experience, and then branch out sound yes. advice. Now, how can startups really stand out among myriad businesses and gain the attention and confidence that's required of them to raise the funding that they need to secure their businesses? Well, that's a strong one because as we see from the economical situation worldwide, how things are pivoting toward lots of things. But let, just give, me, give you a, a highlight about some numbers where like 90% of businesses fail, startups fail. Yeah, 10% of them fail within the first year. So yeah, it's not what so, we want to hear today. Yeah, but, but, but what I'm trying to say is that when you are going to establish a business, you have to know that this is something risky. It's vulnerably risky. So doing this, you, ha you already approved and signed off that you are going to do this kind of thing, risky. So what, what are the key success things, the pride side of the 10% that succeed to live and what are the main things from what I saw and from the experience? First, they have to understand well their numbers, the margins. It's all about business margins. Believe me, accounting 101 is crucial and important for everyone to understand and to read numbers well. They have to look at their P&L carefully. Building the business plan, it's not just a template. I saw several businesses or startups, they just download this template and they go for a couple of questions, they fill the answers, this is not right. You have to do the business plan carefully and doing your forecasts like it should be by doing the research, the appropriate research to reach these uh, uh, findings well. 
building your or scratch the segments or you know segmenting the marketing carefully so sometimes we have we, we, I, I saw this kind of businesses that they just go for a segment that is unaccessible how it's it's bright segment lovely one but how you will access the segment it's even more costly than your product so these small things it, it is really um, um, always obvious in the business plan and business model as if the, 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 the previous uh, uh, panel it's really the business model at the end how I collect my money at the end so so these these things the business plan the business model and the uh, financial part is crucial this always the failure the big fail points that all uh, the, the startups uh, uh, the, the ones that I met and worked with they have this issue and then we have the team the team should be empowered majority of uh, startup owners have this one-man show thing you know because I've developed the idea so I can do everything so they just don't empower their employees or they don't hire the right people to do stuff so this is another thing the fourth thing is the brand Believe me, it's not that they, they keep building a lovely product or service, but they don't think about how the consumer will perceive this. Is it crucial or not? So building a brand slash brand love, it is one of the major things that they should work on. Building the story of the brand is something important. Last thing is the ego. Majority of the startups and the people I sit with, they don't listen. They have this ego that they know. They, I invented the idea, so I won't listen. I, I know what I'm doing. And they keep, keep push back, even if you are giving them the most valuable tips through their p and It's obvious. They just keep resisting. So five key points. Accounting, margins, lose your ego, empower your people. And what was the fifth, Hassan? Sorry? What was the fifth? Yeah, the fifth is the brand. and the, uh, the brand, of yeah. course. Now, as a mentor, how do you really keep entrepreneurs and founders motivated and on track to achieving success despite the various challenges that they will inevitably face along their journey? Yeah, so there is a big, uh, there is no link between motivation and success. We have to agree on that. Motivation, I always set with them, I start to the basics. What were the, the main or the major objectives you did for your business. Because usually the issue is with their forecasts or their unachievable objectives they, they, they did at the first place when they were setting their business plan. So at a point he feels like, come on, I cannot reach anything. So he's depressed, he's, he feels that there is no way to go there. So we go and revise carefully the objectives of, thing, of his plan or she's plan, her plan. And we review every and single thing until it's easy to achieve. Then I flood them with lots of success stories happen. So they are just, you know, okay, we are, we are good. We can do like you know, me too effect. Yeah, so these are the, always the, the, the thing. Go for the main forecast and objectives, review them, because sometimes they are not realistic and break them down into small achievable things day by day and then flood them with lots of stories, read about lots of successful stories. And by the way, many of people ask me, why always in the events like we are here, that people come and brag about their stories. It's not about, the, about this. We have to have this portion of success uh, rate stories. As I mentioned, 90% of the business startups fail. So if the pride 10% that fails after a year and we, we listen to these stories, maybe we, we have a chance to be optimistic more. Yeah. Absolutely. Only 10%. Those numbers are daunting, so we do need to hear success stories. Let's talk a little bit about al -Rami. You know, we have a lot of competition arising across the region, and I know that Anrami is interested in expanding in the MENA and attracting um, more clients. How are you planning on doing so? Well, let me start with the competition. The competition is a healthy thing. Actually, it's always healthy to have a competition. Why? Because in a, in a technology like what we are 
offering, it's very um, let's, um, learning, uh, the learning curve of this adoption of technology for the MENA region is difficult. So we had spent lots of time educating and evolving the mindsets of consumers about the streaming platforms and how this business works and how to go to be, um, uh, let's uh, against the piracy uh, legal platform where you, we legalize the content. So it's a hectic journey. Having a competition, they help in evolving and educating the market to reach, uh, to hack the business curve and, and to, to keep the learning curve evolving of the adoption of such technological products. Yeah, so this is from a competition side. For Angami, it's, we have the power of being the first. And I always, always say this for all the technological companies. If you have the same competitive advantage and you have the same everything and almost the same content, again, on the contrary, Angami has even more content and exclusive uh, content that uh, others are not and we have boots on ground and we have the localization aspect so why do the users switch to other unless there is a different competitive advantage which we are not allowing this by being agility and uh, agile in, in, in developing we always pivoting and maneuvering we deliver lots of tailored plans for every and single segments. We keep segmenting the market and we go and touch every and each segment with its proper offerings and unique features that they ask. And also, Angami was built as a social musical platform slash content now. So the social aspect gives Angami the edge because we, 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 we're not just streaming, we are social part where we can chat, where you can know the DNA of other um, uh, user they are um, having on. Um, we have the story things, we have sharing abilities. So the social as we have live radio now, we launched like a couple of years ago now. The live radio is, is just a radio where you can talk, speak, express yourself with the music. It's a full radio, anyone can do uh, a show. So empowering users by these social aspects is something that gives us the edge versus others all the time. Yeah. So you're using technology and innovation to make it uh, easier to navigate, more friendly, and more interesting for your consumers. Yes, uh, especially, we, we were building the, the machine learning, empowering the machine learning across the couple of years, last couple of years, more and more, the artificial intelligence part for the recommendations, everything. It's, it's so my, my, my screen is not as your home page. We are all different. It depends about your taste. We are in the centric of the, of the consumer. We are around, connected to all the devices around. We are having um, um, a special dedicated version of Anagami for everything that is connected around the consumer. So it's all encompassing. And tell us about any future collaborations that are on the horizon for Anagami. Well, um, we are always on collaboration. Actually, we just started to go forward integrations and backward integrations to, to fulfill the whole ecosystem of content. So, for example, we just... Um, uh, brought, uh, we, we bought a company that is for concerts and events, it's called Spotlight. We had this JV with Sony Music, it's called Vibe Arabia, it's a production, full production company. We just launched a new uh, concept that will rock the region and we just launched in Riyadh, it's called Angami Labs, where you have a, live, a lovely dining um, experience in a, in a beautiful restaurant and at the same time there is a live music from the uprising stars from lots of musical uh, hidden gems they are doing so we expose the artists to the audience in the place and then we have a record studio in the place so we can utilize all the content coming out to be a content to spread to all the users. And this was a, a partnership with AdMind, the leading uh, hospitality company um, in UAE and other countries. And Angami Lab will be rolling out in Cairo and 
um, UAE soon everywhere will have an Amirami Lab branch. And is this how you see the future of audio streaming services across the MENA region? The future of audio streaming is getting bigger and bigger because we just scratching the surface. We have a huge segment in the MENA region. We have, uh, we have I, I guess it's, it's almost crossing the 600 million or 500 something um, um, uh, the population of the MENA region with 32% uh, of youth representing this region. So it's huge and we just starting to, to spread the knowledge and that's how, why I think, I, I talked about the competition that help, it helps us to, to, to uh, cascade the knowledge and the uh, experience and uh, the adoption of such services. So yeah, it's the beginning. Hossam Al Gamal, VP of Anrami for North Africa. Thanks so much for joining us and for your Thank tips you so for our young entrepreneurs. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.